Phil, or Phil and Krista desire to have their child receive the sacrament of baptism. And they argue. <laughs> Here are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and parent of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. As many of you were baptized in Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, no longer male or female, but we're all one together in Christ Jesus. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Please answer these questions. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you again renounce sin and turn from its ways and affirm your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? Trust in grace and love. If so, answer, I do. I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his word and continue to show his love? Will you be responsible for nurturing your child in the faith and life of the Christian community? No. Will the congregation please stand? <laughs> Our Lord ordered us to teach those who are baptized. Do you, the people of the church, promise to tell this new disciple the good news of the gospel? to help them her to know all that Christ commands, and by your fellowship to strengthen her family ties with the household of God. If so, respond with, we do. We do. We give thanks to God, who nourishes us and satisfies all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning of time, God's Spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. In the time of Noah, God destroyed evil with the waters of the flood, giving righteousness a new beginning. God led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. And in the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Christ set us free from sin and death and opened up the way to eternal life. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it we were buried with Christ in his death. From it we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your Spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise them to new life and graft them to the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them that they may have power to do your holy will. And continue forever in the chosen life and risen with Christ. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be all praise, honor, and glory, now and forever.
joy and thanksgiving. We welcome her to share with us the ministry of Christ, for all are one in him. The peace of Christ be with you.
the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what they say. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who live uh, far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from the corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. And that's a very different question. 
And so he was asking the members of that congregation to enter into a new season of prayer and renewal and discernment with a new pastor. He challenged them to find energy, to find vitality for new ways to serve in their community. These two disciples we heard about this morning were just walking along, partly out of despair, partly in sadness, partly in fear. And they were moved by Jesus from fearful lives to a new level of commitment and a new level of sacrifice in his service with Christ at the center. We too are walking a journey together. Years ago, years to come, walking together, sometimes missing Jesus when he's right there in our midst and we get too angry, too frustrated, sometimes too tired to recognize him. So we need his words of scripture and we need him to be here beside us. And we need the Lord to make adjustments in our ministry with one another, with ourselves, and for this community. And he is more than willing to come and show us as we read different scriptures, as we open up different devotions, to see there the guidance that the Lord will have for us in the days and weeks and years to come. Parker Palmer tells the story about a medieval monk who died. And was their tradition in Ireland, he was entombed in the wall of the church. It was sealed up with stone and with mortar. Some days later, they heard a scratching at the wall. And they opened up the wall, and there was the monk alive. He had not died. But in those days that he was behind that wall, new insights had come to him from all of his life of prayer and reading of the scriptures. He had come to a different place in his faith journey, and he opened up to them scriptures in a new way. However, those new things were against the teaching of the church. So they put him back in the wall and entombed him once again. Palmer suggests that amazing blessings can be learned from our times of solitude, our times away from others, our, our time in devotions, our, our time when we simply let ourselves enter into scriptures. And sometimes those amazing things are fearsome to others. And sometimes that Holy Spirit works in God moments where we feel like we're sealed up in the wall and no one wants to listen to us. Sometimes God may send us moments, not days, ways to interpret scriptures, ways to challenge others in the mission of the church that no one else wants to hear. And we hear Jesus' words, how foolish we are and how slow of heart we have been to believe. How slow of heart we have been to believe. The disciples were trying to plan their future together, and they were trying to do it without Jesus. They had heard the good news. The women had seen him. There was an empty tomb. They had bits and pieces of circumstantial evidence. But it wasn't until he actually appeared to them that they got the message. And they began to find a new direction in the scriptures. They knew it was fulfilled, but here Jesus had to tell these two disciples again to illuminate the scriptures in a new light. Presbyterians are characteristically voracious, lifelong learners. Learning as we walk along with other, other disciples, always keeping an eye open to new ways of looking at things and being a little resistant to those new ways. But then also people of prayer. So in a sense, Presbyterians always have one eye open to walk the walk of faith and one eye closed to be praying without ceasing. Just as two disciples were walking away from town, wandering and wondering what to do with their faith, so we now have a whole new generation of young people walking out of Peshatkin, wondering what to do with their faith. We know there isn't much to hold them here. But we do know, like the first evangelists, they're going to travel to other communities. And what we do here and now, along with the other churches in our community, will determine the message that they take to others. According to the Pew Research Group and the professor in Vermont, young people seem to experience their religious rituals in a different sense than we do. Instead of always attending worship, going through the hymns and the prayers and the scriptures, 
they can attain, attend to their rituals through cyberspace. They do it online. It's an amazing thing that it's more of a grassroots movement, open up to anyone who wants to get online and communicate with God and with others. In a sense, the road to Emmaus has become the road to the Internet Explorer. So what kind of spiritual lives will Emma and Ellis Hunt live? We, we don't know yet. Our scripture from Acts says that we need to repent of our ways. So maybe some of the ways in which we've been trying to instruct children need to change. Same message, this just a different focus. And instead of looking to our needs as we get older, what about looking to the needs of the younger generations? Jesus said that this is open to all. He's invited the children, as he said, do not reject the children, but welcome them, for of such is the kingdom. And as Paul wrote in this book of Acts, we also read that this message, this promise, is for our children and our children's children and for all those who are far off, for all those, for everyone that the Lord our God calls to him. Krista graduated with a diploma in nursing and now has to keep learning new requirements that her profession needs more education. Phil manages the bank very differently than he would have 20 years ago. They wouldn't have let him in the bank 20 years ago, perhaps. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so how will Emma and Ellis <coughs> grow into their faith? Will they want to worship here? Will they want to worship anywhere? Will they simply get online and talk to others about God in that format? We don't know. But we do know that God's promise is to us, to our children, and to our children's children. Molly Basquette tells the story about her church in Massachusetts as they wondered about why young people didn't attend. He said, she says, a young woman came to our church last year. Well, actually, she didn't come to our church. She wanted to come to our church, but she didn't feel as if she deserved to because she didn't know the Bible very well. So she came to a Bible study on a weeknight for a while, first to school herself and then to share later. Somehow, she had gotten the idea that she had to be an expert in Christianity before she came to worship wasn't something that our church tried to teach, and I tried to tell her, we're United Church of Christ, most of us don't know the Bible either. And yet, she felt a wall up, a divide, a barrier, a reluctance to go. So it may not be something that we intend or even show outwardly, but something that others sense. Yet some of that same research shows that people born after 1980 are praying as much or more than those who are 40 to 90 years of age. It's not something we've heard about very often. If they're praying as often, then they're connecting with God just in a different way. One year after a forest fire in the Yellowstone Park, rangers found a charred bird at the base of a tree. One ranger gently touched the bird, and it fell over, and three chicks scurried out alive after the fire. The mother bird knew that smoke would rise and so nestled them down at the base of that tree. The blaze arrived and scorched her, and yet her love for them was steadfast, knowing that her chicks could live. And we read in Psalm 91, He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. Being loved this much by God should make a difference in our lives. Gratitude for the love of Jesus can guide us into our future together. So listen to Rick Nutt's closing words to the congregation at College Drive as he speaks to us also. I charge you now to live in new arenas of service. It may be a renewing and revitalizing of current programs. No doubt it will involve a deeper study of scripture and more prayer that the Spirit may move among you in ways you cannot now envision. I don't know. But I do know that all any of us is given is today. And it is in being faithful today that we find God's presence and guidance with us. 
If you focus on the work to be done now, you will find vitality and energy for the life of this congregation. This is my charge, that you live into the ministry that God has given you now, trusting God to guide you in your life together as a congregation. And thanks be to God. Amen. <coughs> Let us join in our prayer of relinquishment, of a letting go. Let us pray together. <clears throat> Today, O oh Lord, I yield myself to you. May your will be my delight. May your way have perfect sway in me. May your love be the pattern of my living. I surrender to you, my hopes, my dreams, my ambitions. <laughs> Let us join in the recognition of the people. Give me 
face was called by God through the voice of this congregation <coughs> to give particular service as our carol choir director for 23 years. We remember his joy.
those fires raged in California, Jordan Alperson was uh, evacuated along with others from Camp Pendleton, uh, the San Mateo fire, but he is safe and sound. I think. Any other prayer concerns? Let us join in prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day, a day of joy and celebration. We thank you for Emma and for Ellis. We thank you for all those who have been baptized in this church and in our earlier church buildings. Not a building, not a place. It is the spirit of your love being recognized. As we each journey on our faith, we know you are the one who walks beside us. Even when we ignore you, even when we're mad at you for the trials in our lives, even when we're so happy go lucky that we take credit for our own accomplishments, you still walk beside us. So we thank you for each opportunity that we can recognize you in the breaking of bread. This day we rejoice with the women's luncheon tea. We thank you for the gathering of men serving and women eating and rejoicing. We thank you for the moments that we show gratitude to you, for all those who have served us in so many different ways, for endless patience and endless energy. We thank you for Kim's joining along with our other musician leaders here to bless us with the gift of music, to watch the faces of young boys and girls, men and women, those of all ages, playing musical instruments, singing, and for the song in our hearts that echoes in sympathetic vibration when we hear the praise from their lips and from the gift of their talents. We thank you, Lord, for continuing to call us to stretch us in new ways before this congregation dies. For you have given us a mission, and in the years to come, challenge us in new ways. Challenge us to do things that we cannot even imagine. Challenge us to do things for which we do not have the resources. Challenge us to do ministry that we're not ready to do. Because only then, without the resources, without the talents, without the people, without the money, without the timing, we will depend solely on you to provide. You are the great provider. Be with those in hospitals and in nursing homes, in Alzheimer's units, for those learning to deal with diabetes through lifestyle changes. Be with those who give the gift of life to others. For one who donated a kidney and for another who received it. For one who listened to someone's questions and doubts and the other who received it. We thank you for good neighbors, for good friends, for strangers that sometimes know us and show us how we are to act towards one another. Let us welcome our children, our children's children, and all those who are far off to recognize them by name, to care for them, to kneel beside them, to listen to their silent prayers, and to give thanks for prayers even on the internet and wherever you may connect with your people. For all of these gifts and so much more, we give you thanks in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
give generously together to the mission work of Jesus Christ.
forth into the world with courage, without fear, with prayer in your hearts, and with a quick step, that others may recognize the Spirit of God is with you. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and always.